Okay, this is live. I seem to be live, but without an image. Okay, this is live. Good. So, um, yeah, <laughs> uh, round 10, candidates tournament, a very, very quick overview. So um, in the game between Kawana and Ding Lian, Kawana, he went into uh, the, the Spanish where Ding Lian lives. And uh, I think he must have had planned something planned after night before, which Ding Lian has played a number of times. Um, instead, Ding Lian played Queen C8, which I'm not sure this was specifically prepared for this game, but just wanted to avoid preparation, I would guess. And he's looked at it before, and um, it is possible why this may be a little bit better here, but it doesn't seem like much. Um, so the situation was that uh, the Kawana sacrificed a pawn, it was just slightly worse and it, it really wasn't very interesting and I didn't spend my, much time on it. Um, so I was uh, I was more looking at this game between uh, Monsieur Le Grave uh, and, uh, and then Iskiri and uh, the, the piece is apparently jumping around a, a little bit, bit fast on YouTube. Uh, haven't missed much. So, um, Monsieur Le Graf, he played the the knight d5 variation against the Sveshnikov. Um, I have to say, I don't really understand why Giri wants to play Sveshnikov in this tournament, but his preparation. And then here, a4 is a big line, and, uh, and sometimes c4, which is what Monsieur Le Graf played. And here, I don't know of a drawback for black in the c4 variation of, of uh, kicking the knight back early. I, I just don't know it. Um, in the a4 variation, there's some a4, a4, a5 ideas, but in the c4 variation, I don't know of the drawback. Um, Gary played bishop e7, which I always thought was, was very reasonable. Uh, and it is very reasonable. And the idea is to come into a variation that, that looks like this. And black has uh, full equality. Um, but here, uh, Vachila Graf, he tried this C5 idea. And it's objectively harmless if you play reasonable moves, which, which Moisenko did in a bridge game against Tiberinov, where after this exchange, he put the knight on the most obvious square. This is f6, it's very stable, attacking the d5 pawn. White doesn't have any advantage at all here. Um, but Geary, he uh, played knight a6. I would guess he was outside preparation and Monsieur Legrave was not. And it's not like it's an advantage, but it's a, it's a little something. Black has to solve a few problems before he equalizes. So here, b5 was 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 best. He played b6, bishop b7 is still fine. Bishop g5, and here was actually the moment he had to uh, play accurate. And as it often as in these games, uh, the the longer he didn't play accurate, the more accurate he had to play to equalize. So at this point, he had to play f6, which is not a very natural move to play. But since we're playing f5 anyway, it actually doesn't make a problem. Um, he played h6, bishop h4, and here the computer finds this wild a, uh, a5, a4 idea, which is not so much to play b5, even though it's a threat, but it's to uh, come with a rook to a5 and attack the d pawn. It's a very interesting idea. Um, Instead, uh, Giri, he moved the pieces around like this, and, and he was actually uh, 
really worse here. He hadn't got the pieces out. If and here they both players sort of didn't play very well for a while. Um, if White kept the structure, he would have been better. Instead, uh, Le Graf, he took the the pawn. And here, if uh, if Black had played Queen B6, it does require some accurate calculation. But here, the opposite called bishops ensures the draw, and it was a little back and forward. And um, eventually, uh, White missed some some chances, uh, especially here. Rook AC1, not a very difficult move. Okay, Bishop A6 by no means uh, forced, but but here Queen C6 and and the C pawn is quite strong and it's a real advantage. So uh, Vichy Grave missing a lot of chances to be better. Giri, despite a bit shaky play, escaping with a draw. Um, it's, it's very very difficult for me to see a path to Giri winning the tournament now, but. Uh, you know, stranger things have happened. Okay, we had a game between uh, Wang Hao and Grischuk, which was uh, quite wild. So in the start, they had this French possession, could be played in many ways, and they spent a lot of time. Both of them are often keen to get into time travel. Grischuk, of course, more than anyone. And uh, then at, at this moment, uh, Wang Hao made a queen sacrifice, which was uh, quite interesting. EF6, and take an E7, rook E8, and knight F4, knight B6. And the sacrifice was objectively okay if you had taken on B6 and knight D4, and then he will take on D5 next time, whether or not right, black takes on B2 or not is it's a different matter. It's by no means forced. Instead, he took on d5 and tried to create uh, lots of threats. I wasn't really working, but Grischuk uh, had to solve the problems here with a little bit more than a minute on the clock. And he just didn't. He played bishop d5, and after take, take, and knight f5, uh, white had enough compensation. And in the end, it was a very clear fortress, and it was just a draw. Even if Black was somehow to um, succeed in uh, eliminating the queen side plus the white bishop, the rook can go between h4 and f4. This is just never going to win. But this moment here, uh, if he had had uh, two or three minutes rather than uh, just over one, he might have seen that uh, this ending, uh, which at first glance looks like it should be holdable for white actually really isn't uh of course he just had to see that it was uncomfortable for white and he had to see white's options in, in the other lines to play it um but we can say something like here where the rook's coming up and ready to attack the pawns rook a5 followed by rook b5 is a problem rook h6 is followed by the problem a check on e6 could be a problem king g4 could be a problem there's a lot of threats here um, the computer is very excited. I think in practical play, winning it with black would not be be that easy, but certainly it was worth a shot. Um, finally, uh, Nepomniachtchi against Alexenko, which is my game of the day for uh, USTest.org. I think it's up already. Um, so the narrative I have for this game is, okay, we have a very normal position here. Black can play bishop e7 and just develop and dc4 is also a no normal line i've played it myself it's very natural for an actual player you uh sort of get some free please play but you give up the the center pawn uh check might be seven queen c4 a6 and queen c2 and this so b5 doesn't come with a tempo and the big thing here this is really understanding the game c5 knight c3 the real thing here is you need to notice to play this. Uh, bishop e7 is a horrific mistake. Um, queen c7 is the move. And the point is that after castle and b6 and bishop b7, you're just in time. And when bishop f4 comes, you play bishop d6. So bishop e7 is would just be a lost tempo in, in this stuff. It's just horrific. 
Um, after bishop e7, the both castles, then d4. Here, black had to play b5 and pray that it all would, would hold together. It doesn't feel obvious that it does, but it's actually not so crushing. Instead, he took and took, and, and actually the game is already over. Black's never going to manage to develop the, the queen side. Um, a few moves later, the position was like this. White has all the pieces in the game, and black, well, I think bishop d7, I think knight d5 uh, wins on the spot. Who comes to c7? Um, so there's some lines and stuff, but really the key point is they got to a place like this where already for black having played e5 and uh, abandoned the light square bishop is just bad. After take, take bishop e4, he couldn't defend h7 and the game just collapsed. Um, so that was a very quick breakdown. Um, so Sega uh, says, a pit had happened this way with such horrible opening play. Pretty sure many people would now suspect Alisenko threw the game on purpose to help his Russian compatriot win the tournament. I, I just think that is, is nonsense. Um, the, there, I, I've heard these kind of uh, accusations before. There were accusations against uh, Svitler in 2013 that he threw the game against Kramnik. Uh, in round eight, I guess it was, where Kramnik played a, a really wonderful game. Um, and, uh, it, you know, it's just nonsense. At the time, the two of them were not on speaking terms at all. Uh, you know, they just never, ne it was not even high or anything between them. Uh, and we should not forget that, uh, that uh, Alexenko, he beat Grischuk who uh, was not out of the tournament at that point. Um, so how can a super GM play this line with black and not know it? Um, well, the thing is, Alexenko really is here because there's a Russian sponsor. Um, and that's it. And uh, OK, he did. Uh, qualify in, in front of other Russian players, but he did not qualify for the candidates. He is here on a wild card. Uh, he bought, they bought his, him a, a space. And he got here based on a result of one tournament. And he did reasonably well in the tournament, but he didn't do well enough to qualify. And then he got the wild card. It's a, it's a great opportunity. Um, I'm sure he's learning a lot about the difference in the level. Um, but the difference in the opening level is quite high. Um, and other people who are like 2,700 sometimes when they, they play against uh, the world elite, they or, or have training sessions with it, they get shocked at just how different the level is. Um, <laughs> Jeremy is saying, Are you, am I eating my hat since Karana isn't leading? Uh, I think I have to uh, produce a, a cure for boldness, but uh, let me stop sharing here and let's see if we can get John in. And uh, this is a technical experiment. Let's see if it is working. Are you there, John? I am here. How are you, Jakob? So I have to turn on my sound, otherwise I can't Stop hear. sharing here and let's see if we can get John in. And, uh, this is a technical experiment. Let's see if it is working. Are you there, John? Okay. I am here. How are you, Jan? Okay, um, we, we are okay now, uh, John. <laughs> uh, yes, so beginner here on YouTube. Not as bad as the first day, but uh, still, I should have turned off the sound from uh, from that browser. There are always learning curves with everything. I tell you, for, for the people who are able to check out the coverage on uschess.org, um, I am going through a learning curve right now because even though I edit the magazine, most of the time I don't uh, do a lot of heavy work with layout, especially with diagrams. 
Mm -hmm. And I am doing the PDFs, the PDF versions of Jakob's analysis for each uh, game of the day. And boy, is there a learning curve there. <laughs> it's, well, um, there was a few things about sequential stuff and so on. So anyway, do you have this standing ready? Because I, don't... Uh, I do actually, if you want to give me a second, I can pull it up. You are normally well, more well organized than I am. That's why you're uh, the editor and I'm the creator. That's, I, I'm doing it all for the magazine. It's, it's uh, here we go. Where is, where did I put it? Oh, come on. Candidates. <laughs> I'm I'm uh, I offered, I, the dog is saying I bet my house on this. No, I offered to bet my house on it. Uh, but I have to say it's a pretty shabby house. There's no power on the first floor. So uh, there we go. There, here are the standings after today's uh, today's game. So Napomniachi, a full point ahead with four rounds to play. And then we've got a and he's got two white against uh, Kawana and Giri. Is that right? No, no, Giri here already played with white. So he's, he's got Kawana with white and he got MVL with white. Uh, yeah, I, I, I know he's played. He's got white against Kawana. Um, I wasn't so he's White sure against about... MVL in round 13 because he lost to him in round seven and they swapped the last round. Uh, and then he's got to play... Uh, black with Wang Hao and black with Ding Liren. Um, which, well, these guys haven't played that well, but uh, uh, so Ding Liren won this game with, with Kawana, but uh, <laughs> um, and Wang, Wang Hao won Wang. against Ding Liren, and that's sort of it for them. Yeah, yeah it's. Um... I mean, I, I don't know. Uh, it, it sort of feels like any one of them could go on a run here, but a, a point with, with four rounds to play seems like a, a very, and, and with the favorable, the relatively favorable color uh, allocations. Yeah. It feels it's, like it's going to be tough. Um, Sam was, was, I talked to Sam Shanklin a bit earlier, and he was saying that unless uh, Nepomniachtel loses with white and Italian, which which is not so easy to do if you're playing very cautiously as he's doing, um, he's going to make it. And yeah. uh, to me, it, it, it does look like he's going to make it. And as far as I know, in the world ranking, he's now number uh, uh, number three. Um, I saw that on Twitter as well. <laughs> you're, you're ahead of me. Um, no, he, he looks like a big favorite. He just has to cruise home with... Uh, is plus three, which is the usual winning score. And we I, have to remember that when Kawana made plus four in Berlin, uh, he won with a whole point ahead. And he played for a win where draw was enough to secure the uh, secure the, 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 the win of the tournament. But he just saw no risk in the position. So he, he, he cruised at home against, with black against Gistro. Now I, I'm sure that by saying this, I'm gonna I'm gonna have to eat crow or eat my hat or eat something. But I did want to ask you uh, three days ago when we when we spoke uh, in a video for uh, for Killer Chess Training.com. Uh, Killer Chess Training um, who, who was it between us who said Napomniachi was going to win? What, was oh, I, I, I didn't. <laughs> <laughs> it wasn't me. I, I can't remember. What you, <laughs> you can't just make it up now. No, it's on video. It's, they, not, I, it's not like it's recorded anywhere. No, it's so, not. Uh, you did say Nippon Miyato was your, your favorite or in the end? Well, I, I, I thought, I thought Nippon Miyato probably had the best chance. Um, I, I was, of course, hoping for, you know, Fabiano. And I, I still am. I mean, there's still a path, but it's, I, it's, I, I have to say it's narrowing. That. The play I've seen from Kawana has not been especially inspired. Of course, it hasn't been inspired from uh, Nepomniachi either. Um, uh, so there's a question here from uh, Jeremy Hart. Did what I are our sharing? predictions for the future score in a match between Carlsen and Nepomniachi? Mm. Um, Should I shop, stop sharing, by the way, so they can... Yeah, so we, stop sharing so they can see your beautiful face instead. Yes, I didn't. Yet. And see why you're going to sue me if uh, if I don't produce a cure for baldness. 
Uh, to be I'm honest, trying. if you had hair, you would shave it off and look like this, wouldn't you? Yeah, I would. My, I, I like the way my head looks. Yeah. Kushal won gear to win. I, I think we need a full-scale invasion uh, to, to make that happen. Uh, no. Um, no, I think we can say that Nepomniachtchi is moving into like 70, 80% territory. Um, yeah. Uh, you know, and apparently, if, if you go check Twitter, um, and if you if you had happened to watch uh, Carlson's commentary today, which I guess is the last day he's doing commentary because it the was the last day he did today. Yes, yeah, that's the most of it. Yes, uh, but he was talking about Napomniachi, and basically he said that, and I'm paraphrasing here, that what Napomniachi has not done, or what needs what he needs to do, is not so much. Um, burnish his his top strengths, but he needs to raise his floor, mm -hmm. so that there's just a variability in his play. That at least now Carlson thinks you know is is still needs some work, and I, I think that goes along with some of what you've said that that he's he's inconsistent and he's not. Um, well, he loses interest a lot and just just makes random moves. I think, yeah, uh, which uh, I if you, if you look at his game that he played against um, uh, Ding Lian. And then uh, there was some, some, some various points where Ding Lian could have held the game with some, some accurate and, and very nice lines. I don't think these lines are impossible to find for someone who's looking for them. Um, but uh, Nepomniachtchi was, was saying, oh, if you, if you play like this, you're obviously you're computer check, uh, cheating. Mm -hmm. But if you look at his time consumption for the game, he played incredibly fast. So the fact that he had seen none of this was just the, the same way as uh, you don't see people waving at you on the Formula One track, you know? <laughs> Yum. Straight past. And I think there, there is some, uh, some inconsistency there, but the question is then, does he actually have a bigger chance against Kawana and or against the Carlson than Kawana? Because he's a worse player. Yeah, I, I don't know. It's I don't know. It's, Carlson seems much more mature than he was uh, five years ago in the match against uh, Kayakin. Because there he, he sort of like he was so much better such much uh, so much a better player. And uh, he just expected to win by default. And Kayakin came with a, with a very strong strategy of not losing and frustrating him. And I, I back then, I had talked to, uh, to Motilev, who was part of Kayakin's team. And I'd said, OK, the way I see the match going is Carlsen is going to get frustrated when he doesn't win a game. Then he's going to overpress. He's going to lose a game. But then he's going to come back in full force. And then you're probably going to end in a playoff. And for the playoff, have something new prepared and he had told kayak in this and then when they're like on, after round 12 in in uh, in the match in new york and they're like okay now we're here we don't have anything special because kayak in, he was just happy to make it to playoff initially and had been busy doing uh, all kind of uh, tv shows and so on and not thinking about possibly winning the match um which you know it's a shame. Yeah. Um, but, it, but it is what it is. Nepomniachtchi, could you see it happen the same way that he spends six months being a celebrity in Russian, on Russian TV rather than uh, preparing for a match? I don't think so. Um, not to the same extent. I think he will, will really try to think about uh, how to, to approach the match and maybe I will Maybe I will talk to Alexander again, and to, it's very likely he will be a part of the team. He's not a part of the team now. Uh, maybe he has had some input. I don't know. Um, but uh, his uh, his best friend uh, in the whole world, Vladimir Potkin, is Nepomniachtchi's head coach, and have been for more than a decade. Um, there was a, a point where. Motilev, Potkin, and Naya, they all lived in the same building. And Nepomniachtchi was a student of, uh, of Potkin, but also a little bit the others. And they were all friends. 
who lived in the same apartment building in Moscow, these three guys. And first Nepomniachtchi won the European Championship. Next year was Potkin. And then a little later, Mochilev and Naya also won it. So it was like, this is the best building in chess ever. Yeah, the three of them, they're all, they were all somewhat Dvoretsky students, right? I mean, I know Motlyev was, but... Uh, yeah, no, no, no. Uh, Mochilev and, 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 and Potkin were very much Dvoretsky students. Okay. Okay. Uh, Naya, maybe maybe to a lesser degree. I, I, I don't know him. Yeah, I, th I think I remember. I, I remember that because they. I think they all play in the Dvoretsky Memorial that happens every year, but I think they're also all mentioned in in his um, in his autobiography in the first volume. Um, and that's my memory anyway. I could be wrong. I did want to ask you. I, I had two questions that I, I wanted to sort of throw at you and, and see what you had to say. Um, the first you were you were talking about time management and how Nepomniachtchi can play fast and therefore somewhat superficially. Mm -hmm. Akiri also, yes, but yes. How, okay, so, you know, okay, it's, it's, it's Wednesday, it's Grishik is in time trouble, it's, it's just standard. It's just Wednesday, yes, who cares? Yeah. But how do you spend an hour and 12 minutes or so on move 13? Uh, I think it was move, was it move 12 or 13. Um, One of those two, I, all, all I do is I, I, I turn on the game and I look and he's got, you know, seven minutes left on, on, on the 13th move in a, in a, in a French defense that's not, I don't, I don't even know if they'd left theory. Like, why do you try to look for uh, logic in crazy behavior? So, uh, no, I, I, can, uh, I, can, I can tell you where to go. You have to go to behavioral uh, psychology. Okay. Uh, that's the only thing. There, there, there is, in uh, Gristiuk's uh, mind, there is a reward loop. Um, so you know it's a uh, it work the way we work is it's a trigger that leads to behavior that leads to reward mm -hmm. and trigger triggers are constant so you cannot avoid triggers uh it's it's, it's sort of like you know uh the, there are people i know that whenever they open a beer you know they they look around for a cigarette you know this is the, the, the most common common trigger you know or uh you know, whenever Gristiuk uh, gets into time trouble, it probably comes some, some emotional reward. And the interesting thing, I was hearing a podcast uh, by Ezra Klein from the New York Times, which you probably know of. Excellent. Um, I just, excellent. And he had a one hour interview with a, an author who had written a book called Unwinding uh, Anxiety. And he was saying that anxiety also creates reward loops it's the same loops and even though you don't feel like you're rewarded there is, is something happening where you still have taught your mind that this is the best option um and uh, you know i think in general you have to uh, to have good habits uh, at an early age and this is why at the academy we you know we're constantly asking people to you know, come with a suggestion here, come with a suggestion. And even if you don't know what's going on, you should try to make uh, decisions because making decisions is what chess is about. Okay, sometimes you don't have enough time to make a, a deep decision. You have to make a guess, a qualified guess. You think a little bit and you make a guess. It's a really important part of chess is a decision-making game. Now, what is Grishuk doing? Well, making decisions is certainly not part of it. Mm. And, yeah. and he just tried to address it once in a tournament all like you know he had to pay someone money if he got into time trouble and stuff like that but in, in reality it's uh he, sh he should talk to a, a good psychologist which should look at it as an addictive behavior talking about decision making yes. um I was hoping that if you have the game handy or if you can pull it up, I wonder if we could go back to round eight and to Caruana's win over MVL. Um, yes, we can. Um, and then let me explain why, while you're finding it, if you are able to find it and pull uh, it up. I am able to find it. I'm just... Uh, um, so, you know, of course, uh, watching the game uh, and watching the internet chatter, uh, people were, were relying on the table bases to tell them what was going to happen. So when you're talking specifically about the ending yeah the ending 
Okay, this this was, but this in game is known from. Uh, so I was, yeah, I was going to ask you. I, I was going to ask you though. So, so we're talking yeah. essentially about uh, about an in game that looks a little, little bit. Yeah, bad. something like this. So, I, in terms of decision making, this is this is. I mean, obviously, there's going to be a lot of calculation going on to try to figure out. There should be. There really shouldn't be. Well, that, that's what I was going to ask you. Is this, is this schematic thinking that we're having? Yes. having to, okay. Yes. Can you explain the, the, how that works? So the, the way this works here, this is uh, something I learned from, uh, I'm not going to tell the whole anecdote, but something I, I learned that this is how Ulf Anderson thinks. And okay. he is this great, um, great endgame player. And uh, especially, you know, people were especially very impressed by this position. I'm going to just put a center here. And it's black to play that there's only one saving move. And actually, it's, I think it's the same position, more or less, is in Horwich and Kling's uh, study. Um, and everyone is like, oh, it's such, how, who would ever work out that knight c7 is the only move? Well, if you think of it here, uh, these kind of fortresses, um, if the king comes in and comes in and, and attacks the pawn, you're dead. And, and if you have any knowledge of any experience of fortresses, then that's it. Um, so the pawn will keep uh, hold on these squares. So if the white king reaches uh, these squares, mm -hmm. I think you're dead. So if we look at this, um, we can see that the knight has to protect some squares. We can see that if the white king is on, on g7, the king can be on g6. So in order to push our king away from here, the rook will have to give check somewhere out here. Okay. So the king will have to be on g6, will be pushed away by check. Um, and then the white king's on e7, and then we need knight f5 check. So here and here are covered by the pawn. This square is covered by a knight from f5. I should make this yellow, actually. Um, so we just have to deal with these three squares. And that's schematic thinking. Now you see where the knight belongs. And so how did he, did he use, uh, did, did Karawan use a similar line? Like um, okay. he, he just didn't think like that. And what you see here is um, there's a reason why these are the best players in the world, but there's also um, something we all have to understand about it, which is, yeah, and here knight c7 is the, the only drawing move because the knight has to go to g7. It's, it's just not so complicated if you think this way. But you will see, you know, everyone always know that, uh, that you know, I have this article called uh, What's Wrong with Danny Skiri? And Danny Skiri is, is, is he's really a, like a favorite player of me to follow. I find his game so fascinating, but he doesn't calculate very well. Um, and here we say, okay, what, what are the strengths of MBL? He's very well prepared. He really, uh, he really calculates well. He's very well in dynamic positions. He doesn't seem to have as good endgame technique as a Geary or a, or a Carlson. And also about this thing about uh, um, an opening preparation, we could see that sometimes, you know, if he has zero three, in his poison pawn knight off against Kawana, then he's doing something wrong. Um, so that's here. Um, I was going to ask Kawana, the you know the whole plan that 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 was discussed about you know having to get the king to h five, um, and and having to go around that way as opposed to going through the center was that this similar? This like, similar let, me, let me uh, go back to imitation. This was this was truly difficult. Um, so this is this nice and seven for me was not so fa fantastical. But what was really difficult was here, just a few okay. moves earlier. Um, here, this king e four, 
so he here I I cannot in any way fault him for uh, for playing here. And then it, you know we came to this position and we have this draw. Right. I I, I understand how that happens because this was difficult. Um, but like here, not not finding night G seven, and you have lots of time to think, and he just he just didn't ap approach the position the correct way. And you, you may ask yourself, how can a number five in the world player make these kind of mistakes? Well, they're spending so much time on openings, they're spending so much time on on playing and and other things, and. I think a lot of them, they did the in-game work 10, 15 years ago and are not keeping it up. Uh, and we see, like, Kawana, if you could play Rook and Bishop against Rook, he would have had the match in, in 2016. Um, but here he, you know, to find this idea, which he then found eventually here, uh, which is to go to E4 and it dominates the knight. The king cannot really make a, a, a decent move. It has to be ready to to prevent the king from coming around. And then he moved the knight and then he, f he found the right idea with the, uh, all this uh, domination. And it's simply what it is, it's domination. And here he got it at the right moment for here the knight has to be defended and then comes king h5, mm. he, he comes in. And the moment he's in, uh, we saw that it wasn't actually very difficult. Now g4, g5 is coming. So he has to move and here, and if he waits, we just lose a move. And put the king further away, king f7 and, and come over and win the pawn. Give up the rook for pawn and knight and queen's the pawn. So it was, you know, for me, it looked like, you know, Kawana is always very polite in these situations. And he was like, yeah, I thought this. And I thought if you played like this, I didn't see how to make progress. And um, but I, I think he had it under control generally. But this ma this maneuver was actually very difficult. And they both, both got it wrong there. And in the end, it didn't make a difference. Yeah. <clears throat> I thought. I mean absolutely fascinating end game and and you know one that i, I feel like um i'm gonna have to go back and, and try to figure out exactly how it all worked just so i can make sense of it luckily i have good annotations at uschess.org yes uschess.org uh, i've annotated a game of the day every day and uh i think here we should probably say that uh we're making a prediction so i'm going to choose first this time i'm going to go with so you have to go with someone else? I do. Well, in that case, I'm going with uh, Fabiano Caruana. Okay. Um, how the roles have reversed. <laughs> By necessity. I, I, see, I'm, I'm, I'm confused. You know, if you thought Nepomaniachi would win earlier, you would have, I would have thought you were thinking everything was going as it should for him. Uh, for me, it is. But you did stipulate I had to choose somebody else. So yeah, I'm... I'm uh... was just a line I made up on the spot. Ah, nuts. Ah, too bad. <laughs> Bushel is choosing Geary. Um, okay. And the, yeah, the, the chat is uh, talking a lot about uh, the Christchurch game. I, I do think that I don't have the necessary qualification, uh, academic qualification to come with advice. I, I think what was interesting is, is you know, I was looking at the chess.com stream when, um, when Wang Hao sacked the queen. And apparently Danny and Danny Wrench, like a minute beforehand, he, he, he you know, he, he says, oh, what about this crazy line where I give up the queen for the three pieces in the pawn? And then and then all of a sudden Wang Hao plays it. And, and uh, I think Danny may have had a minor conniption. I'm not I, I think he was so shocked that his that his move was on the board that he, he almost fell out of his chair. It was uh, it was glorious Internet entertainment. <laughs> Uh, there's a question here in the chat. What should Fabi do tomorrow to try to win? I think he should rest. And so shall we, because tomorrow's a rest day. Yes. I'll see you all again on Friday, or you'll see me. And uh, we're going to see you again before the, the last round and after the last round, and we'll uh, be much wiser then. I hope so. <laughs> see you later, John.